Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ultimate 7 to the sky. You guys absolutely smashed it in the last episode and uh, all I can really say is, yeah, we're continuing the series. The feedback was amazing and thank you all for, the li for all the likes and the comments. Keep them coming and I have a challenge for you actually. If we reach 40 likes on this video in the next episode, I will jump off the island because I want to see what happens. Will I die down there or am I gonna, just gonna fall down from the sky and hit my island? I don't know and I kind of want to find out. So if we hit 40 likes on this video, I will try and do that. But anyways, let us get right to it. I just completed a quest here, starting a farm, getting eight wheat seeds and two wheat which gives us a little bit of bread and stuff like that, which is cool because I was running out of food. I've also been doing a bunch of off-camera work. As you can see, we now have 27 iron ingots and this thing has absolutely been working in overdrive mode. And yeah, the chest is completely full. I even converted some of it into the compressed variant of cobblestone. But yeah, I, I can barely keep up with this thing. And we also have a completely full fire crucible of lava, which is hopefully going to be very useful today. I also so as I was converting a bunch of uh, cobblestone into gravel so I could sieve it, I kind of fell down and I may or may not have died. But uh, I got this gift and that is going to give us an enchanted book with Tombstone Soulbound, Preserves item about Death. Okay, I guess that might be useful later down the road. Oh yeah, I also went ahead and made this straight up base, which basically if you give it a straight up which has a hundred and something uses, it basically just generates stuff for you. So things like clay, dirt, sand, gravel, sticks, that kind of stuff. And honestly, it's really cool. It's just a very nice way of passively gaining, well, sand and gravel and stuff like that. And it's not too expensive. So yeah. That's nice. Now there are two things today that I would really love to get going with, and that is starting to generate power, moving on to some iron meshes, but also if we move on to getting started part two, I would love to start working in this tech tree because it basically continues. This right here, getting started part two, which basically starts right here. So from this, we can move up and get more power than just the coal generator. And from that, we will be able to move on to the flux server as well as the flux hammer, which would be really, really nice to get our hands on. Because that means we would be able to automate the cobblestone generation, move it into a hammering system, which then turns it into gravel, where it then goes over to an automated sieving system. So we basically just get a constant passive income of iron and all the different ore chunks. So that is our mission for today. That was a lot. But I think to get started, we should probably make our first generator, which is a coal generator. But in order to do that, we need redstone. And in order to get redstone, we need an iron, an iron mesh at the bare minimum. And that then gives the redstone a drop chance of 12.5%. So I think that is the first thing we're going to be doing. First off, I'm going to reduce this down to a 3x3 area. And I just accidentally put dirt in all of it. Can I... Get rid of it again. I guess I just gotta break all of that. Yeah, that's eh, annoying. But now we basically just go ahead and place a flint mesh and turn that into an iron mesh. Perfect. And I'm gonna make a separate sieving system right over here. Hopefully that's not gonna get... Uh, it might jump over here. We'll see. I would actually also love to expand the island a little bit in this direction. Perfect. We have expanded by one block. But now I need to serve dust in order to get redstone. So with that, I have a little bit of a trick for you. You can actually go ahead and make the stone wand, which is actually fairly cheap to make. Just two sticks and a cobblestone. It can basically build up in a three by three like area. And so I just built this pillar and then you just go ahead and vein mine this. And then do that, and that has made the process a whole lot less headachey than before. And there we go. Do this again. We can take we can take the fall. That's what I said in between episodes and died. But the, I got a gift out of it, so that's not too bad. The only negative with the stone wand is that it well runs out of durability very quickly, unfortunately. All right, got a stack of dust, and now I'm just gonna sit here and sieve it until I get to redstone. I'll see you in a moment. Oh, there there we go. That's the first one. Yeah, I'll see you at a moment when I have saved this entire thing. All right, I have my two pieces of redstone. I also got a bunch of Certus Quartz dust, which is from Applied to Logistics. I really want to get into that at some point, but that is further down the road. Oh yeah, and we of course completed the Iron Mesh quest, which has given us some raw iron. Three ride. Okay, you know what? I'll take it. Gladly. The next tier is diamond mesh, but that 
is gonna take a while. Now in order to make the machine frame, which we need to make the coal generator, we are going to be needing four iron ingots, two lapis lazuli, and a little bit of gold, which all should be manageable. There we go, turn that into nuggets and machine frame, ka -ching. and then of course we need the redstone torches. And then, yep, all we are needing now is the six coal, and boom, coal generator. Completed, which in turn will give us four rest of dust and a little bit of XP. Nice. And this has then unlocked the getting started pipe part two, which we can just go ahead and claim right away. And there we go. We are now started right here. So now we can go ahead and make the magmatic dynamo, which is looks a bit complicated, but it actually isn't. This will basically just generate power from lava, which currently for us is a much more sustainable way of uh, generating power other than burning coal, because we only have so much coal, but we have endless amounts of cobblestone, and this thing can generate it fairly fast, so it's, it's an obvious choice. So to make a magmatic dynamo, <laughs> That word is tough. We need a redstone flux coil, which is two redstone and a gold ingot, which is relatively easy. However, we also need an Envar gear, which we need Envar ingots in order to get. But to make that, we need Envar dust. And to make Envar dust, we need iron dust and nickel dust. And the way we can get iron dust is if we make some sort of ore hammer and then we just hammer on some raw iron or nickel or whatever it is we need. So we need an ore hammer. Oh wow, we got a lot of different options here. Actually, no, this is all from Kaden Tinker's Construct. We can either make a copper one, an iron one, a bronze one, an invar one, or a platinum one. Uh huh, and I need blocks for it. Hmm, I think I'm gonna go ahead and make a copper ore hammer. Yes, that's probably going to be the cheapest thing to get. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and steal eight cobblestone and I'm gonna make another furnace over here so I can smelt other... Wait, can I make... No, I can't make small coal chunks. Oh well, I just want to smelt to this one raw gold here. We are actually able to make upgraded furnaces, I'm pretty sure. Glass and, well, just iron. Hmm. These smelt faster and can also be configured to be automated with a cogwheel in the top left of the GUI. Oh, uh, that's a lot of iron though. I'm not gonna be upgrading any furnaces today because I know we will be needing a lot of iron for the automated silver and hammer machine. So I'm not gonna do that today. But that is definitely an upgrade that I want down the road. But there we go, that is our first block of copper. Okay, I just see as well that there are two different types of gear, one from all the ores and one from the thermal series. And if we take a look at all the ores one, this requires eight Invar ingots. However, the one from the thermal series only requires four. So that is a very important thing to note. And with that said, the rest of the copper has now been smelted. So we can go ahead and make our final copper block and go ahead and make our copper ore hammer. So with that, I should be able to take a chunk, a few chunks of nickel here and just add them in here and boom, nice. Now I can go ahead and do this with the ingots, but that would be a total waste. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make another builder wand and I'm gonna quickly sieve some gravel to get some more iron. Back at it again. So if I go ahead and take this raw iron, I'll now get two iron dust, which means I can now go ahead and make the Invar dust. Or the Invar blend, I should say. And so each dust is going to convert into an ingot. So I need to actually go ahead and get a lot more iron. <laughs> and with our fourth Invar ingot, we should now be able to go ahead and make an Invar gear and it's raining, of course right after I've slept as well. Now for the magmatic dynamo itself, we do need two Invar ingots, which we got now, so we should actually be able to craft this thing. Awesome, quest completed, more power, I made the wrong thing, there we go. And then we get a multi-cycle injections. Uh, what's that again? Fuel energy, okay, so it basically just increases the energy that we get, I think, maybe? Now with this magmatic dynamo placed down, uh, we'll be able to just basically put lava in manually and it will generate power. However, what I'm thinking is if I'm able to use something like a fluid pipe here, which it is a bit expensive, but if I could then automatically transfer fluid from this to this, is it worth it to make this? Do I have enough? Yes, I do. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it for science. This is in the name of science. 
Uh, I'm gonna regret this. Fluid pipes, there we go. I just used a bunch of iron for that. Let's see if this actually works. Uh, hmm. I may need a pipe wrench. There we go. I should be able to... Yes. There we go. Automatically draining the lava into the magmatic dynamo. So, in theory, in theory, I would be able to plop a cobblestone generator tier 1 on top of this or next to it. Have a hopper, put the cobblestone into this, and we have basically automated power, I think. I think that should be doable. I am going to try that. I just need one more piece of iron. I should have some extra glass maybe somewhere. No? Okay, well, I can make that happen. <laughs> so if I just go ahead and make one more cobblestone tower, that should be enough for me to get enough iron so that I can do this. If I then go ahead and turn this into here, that way we double our output. And if I burn that and I combine this with this, make another on fire crucible and then I burn that too and apparently grow one more tree because I'm out of wood of course I will need one bucket of lava and one bucket of water and then go ahead and do that of course we get the buckets back all as always which is awesome oh yeah we can place this thing in here and I think it will generate more energy I'm not 100% sure I want to go ahead and make an item pipe which will make sense in a moment but I will need more redstone so I'm gonna do a little bit more manual labor here I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch more gravel and a bunch more dust and I will see you once I have done that Okay, so what I've realized as well is if you just leave this running, it is just going to basically waste the lava, which is nowhere near ideal. So I need to figure out if I'm able to potentially turn it off. I have no idea if this does anything. Now I can go ahead and make my two droppers and then make my item pipes. So now if I disconnect this real quick get some more lava generating i could in theory place a fire crucible right there have an item pipe in between and a cobblestone generator tier one on top and i think that with that yes this has been automated <laughs> automated lava Generation, plan, something, something, something. That's actually awesome. Now I just need something for this power to actually be stored in and also some way of me being able to control this thing. I could make something like this, a basic fluid tank, which can hold up to 32 buckets of lava, or any fluid rather. Uh, should I do that? Because then I could make a backlog basically of lava. Yeah, I think I will do that actually. I will be making one of those. I just need, well more iron because that will then be a way for me to control whether or not this thing gets lava or not basic fluid tank there we go and cut you off set you to output set you to output and set you to output as well so this should then feed the lava into this but it's currently not producing any power because it is expecting a high redstone signal so this might actually be working giving it a redstone signal right here because if i then place this here give it power then it will start generating but if i then turn it off it's obviously going to slow down and then eventually lose this power that's in here as well that's fine this is actually a pretty neat setup yeah it's slowly going up and it's not consuming any because i've told it to to basically not work. Yeah, I like this. Now it would just be amazing if we, wait, what mechanism? Oh, oh, I got a free body from that. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> now it would be really nice with some sort of energy storage. And I know we can make it with mechanism. However, that does look, yeah, advanced. However, the mod power is not that advanced. I just need a bunch of dialectic paste which shouldn't be that difficult to get emphasis on shouldn't I'm surprised i haven't gotten more blaze powder from sieving dust oh, well i'll have to make do with 32 for now oh dear oh that just got a little bit more expensive <laughs> well good thing there's this thing called editing and 
off camera work. When you're doing this, you are of course able to also do something like this instead of going up and yeah, I don't know, that might be a little bit less painful. That that's completely up to you, you know, you you decide that, but yeah, that's also a possibility. All right, I should now be able to make everything that I need to make. So some dielectric rods horizontally and also vertically combined together, making the dielectric casing and then some tiny capacitors and me realizing that I need more iron. It's going to be so nice when I can just get iron and stuff like that in the background. So I don't have to do this manual process all the time. I can also go ahead and make some basic edit or starter energy cables, I should say, because that way we'll be able to transfer the power from the magmatic dynamo down to the actual energy cell, just like so. And this thing should be able to store one, yep, one million Fe. Uh, this has, this thing has a little bit of power, so I guess, yep, there we go. We are generating and storing power. I'm just gonna use the lava that is in here. I'm gonna save some though for some other crafting recipes. Also, yes, I know I could have just pointed this into this, but this, it, it's more fancy. That took a lot more than I thought it would. So guys, with that, I am going to call this an episode because this thing has taken a lot longer than I thought it would. Actually, I did a lot more than I thought I was going to do, or I should say was planning on, but we now have an automated lava production facility generating lava, not super fast, but we'll probably be able to increase that down the road, but we can then take the lava, move it over to the magmatic dynamo and then generate power, which can then be stored in this energy cell so that we can automate the sieving process as well as the hammering process. That is gonna be very nice. And I'm looking very much forward to it. And I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well. If you are, be sure to leave this video a like, share it with a friend, subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And I hope to see you in the next episode. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And until next time, goodbye. Yeah.